you for anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for giving us your word, which is our life. We give you praise. Father, even as we receive your word with gladness, Father, let it bring transformation. Let it bring renewal. Father, we take possession of all that you have provided for us Amen. through your death and resurrection. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're in church? You know, the nation, uh, some parts of Canada is going to be closing down from tomorrow for the second or third wave of coronavirus. So we're going to lift up our voices and we're going to pray and rebuke that sickness and that virus. It will not come near your doors. It will not come near your dwelling places. And no one that you know will be a victim of this pandemic. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's sermon is going to be very brief. And the title is Nothing is Too Difficult for Me. I know we know nothing is too difficult for God. But nothing is too difficult for you. Because if you are in Christ Jesus, you take on all that he possesses, all that he is. You take on all his ability and all of his powers. So I want you to gently say to yourself, nothing is difficult for me. Nothing is difficult for me. Because he has given me possession of all that he has. Amen. You see, to be calm in your spirit is to be powerful. To be calm in your spirit, no matter what is going on on the outside, is to be powerful. It doesn't matter what happened out there. When you guide your spirit, as the word of God encourages us to do, with all diligence, the power of the Holy Spirit within you will take hold of you. And all your confessions, all your beliefs will materialize on the outside. So from time to time, it is good to speak to your, to your spirit. You speak to your spirit and say, peace, be still. Spirit, peace, be still. Why? Because nothing is difficult for us. As the children of the Most High God, who nothing is too difficult for, nothing should be too difficult for us. I said, nothing is too difficult for me. And nothing is too difficult for you. It doesn't matter how dark it becomes. It doesn't matter the new sickness, the new illness, the new virus. It doesn't matter what it is. When you take hold of your spirit with the word of God, when you take hold of his word in your spirit, meditating on it, not meditating on the information coming from outside, indeed, the power within you will sustain your natural body. It's a bit transformed by the renewing of your mind. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. 
We read from the Amplified. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. He said, Behold, in the future, behold, in the future restore Jerusalem. I will lay upon it health and healing. I will lay upon it health and healing. And I will cure them and will reveal to them the abundance of peace. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said nothing is too difficult for you. Because God has made provision for everything and turn that will ever come into your life. Whatever you ever witness in life, God has taken care of it. Whatever you have lost in the past, God said, I am restoring it. Whatever your body has suffered, whatever pain, whatever anguish your body has suffered, he said, I am restoring health and I will cure you. I will make you whole as it was before in the beginning. I said to become, to become is power. So calmness should be one of your hallmark. Calmness should be something you are known for. Don't, don't be easily disturbed. Don't be easily moved because you are not like them. Be calm. Everybody is agitated, angry, outbursts of disappointment. Why? Because that is what is inside of them. They are disturbed on their inside and they find a way to express it. They lose their power and they lose their grip. Tell somebody to be calm is powerful. Discipline your mind. Discipline your will to be calm. Don't react to everything that comes your way. That is the practice of faith. Not until you hear from your inside, don't act. Not until you are sure it's coming from your spirit, remain peaceful. Remember when they told Jesus, Lazarus was sick. Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. How did it know? Because his spirit told him he was going to die and he was going to raise him up anyway. So, like Jesus, when we look at situations, we are not moved. Whatever looked difficult, God has given us a solution for it. He said, you should take hold of your spirit. You should guide your mind. Take hold of the word. Let the word come alive in you. And you put it in your mouth and declare it. You release what you want to see. And what you want to be. And it will become. He said, and I will cure them. And we Reveal to them the abundance of peace. Abundance of peace. It describes abundance of peace as prosperity, security, stability, and truth. So when you tell somebody I have peace, what you are saying is that you are prosperous. 
what you are saying, I am secured. What you are saying, I am planted by the rivers of water. And he said, if you are planted by the rivers of water, you bring forth fruit in all seasons. Hallelujah. He said, prosperity, security, stability, and truth. Truth is the word of God. Nothing is too difficult for me. Nothing is too difficult for him. Oh, great and mighty God he is. Nothing is too difficult for him. With his outstretched arm, he delivered those that are destined for death. He has forgiven us our sins. We are heading for death, eternal death. Not the death to this flesh, but he rescued us from eternal death. If, he's, if he was able to rescue us from eternal death, he's able to rescue us from physical death. So no untimely death will come to your household. No untimely death will come to your body. No untimely death will take anything that belongs to you. So be calm in your spirit. Be settled in your heart. And from time to time, you say to your spirit, peace, be still. Peace, be still. And when you say that, what you are saying, in place of lack, there is abundance. In place of instability, there is stability. In place of insecurity, there is security for you. In place of lies, there is truth for you. Because the word of God is your truth. Next verse. He said, and I will cause the cartis, the captivity of Jacob, of Judah, and the captivity of Israel to be revealed, to be reversed, and we rebuilt them as they were at first. He said the hardship that they suffered in the past, the losses that they suffered in the past, the pain that they suffered in the past, the financial losses that they suffered as a result of what the enemy had planned for them. He said he will reverse it and he will rebuild them. When Jesus healed those that were sick and were demon-possessed, he was replacing those things that were dead in them. Those things that were stolen from them. They were being restored. And he said in Psalm 1, that those that are planted by the rivers of water, that they are those that flourish. They are those that do well irrespective of drought. Drought is the same thing as farming. Where, when there is limit, uh, where there is limited resources, where there is sickness, where sickness comes and steal from people, when disaster wipes away what was accumulated? Do you know sickness is worse than an arm robbery breaking into your home? When sickness comes into a home, it's still the joy, it's still their finances, it's still everything that they have, it's still their friendship. And God said, for those that are planted by the rivers of water, they are nourished 
by the life that comes from that water. They are nourished by the word which I speak. Those that are planted are those that are in Christ Jesus, that are feeding on the word, applying the word to their life, applying the word to their situation. That's how you take possession of all that belongs to you. That's how you stop to being worrying. That's how you take hold of your inner self. When you take hold of your inner self and your inner self is calm, your outside will comply and they will be calm. Are you hearing me? He said, I will reverse and I will rebuild. I will reverse and I will rebuild them as they were at first. How were they at first? How were they? Verse 8. And I will cleanse them from all their guilt and iniquity by which they have sinned against me. And I will forgive all their guilt and iniquity by which they have sinned and rebelled against me. God said, sin will no longer be an issue. And Christ has dealt with sin once and for all. And as such, we should be conscious of our righteousness in Christ Jesus. For this is his purpose. And not only are we to exercise our right in righteousness, he said we should go establish righteousness in the lives of, other, of others. Tell somebody I'm a righteousness establisher. He said, go and establish them in righteousness. Go teach them the ways of God. Go instruct them in the word of God. Because I have given you all that is necessary. He said, go. It might look difficult, but for you, it is not. Because nothing is too difficult for me. And nothing shall be too difficult for you. I will rebuild. I will reverse. And I will rebuild. I will reverse. And I will rebuild. When God is rebuilding you, nothing can stop you. When the world is building you up, nothing can stop your progress. Verse 9. It said, And Jerusalem shall be to me a name of joy. Hallelujah. He said, you will be to him a name of joy, a praise, and a glory before all the nations of the earth. He said, and Jerusalem shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and a glory before all the nations of the earth. That year of all the good I have done for it. These are the things. We are taking possession of. 
These are the things the world has provided for us. These are the words of God to the people who believe in him. He said, and they shall hear and tremble because of all the good and all the peace, prosperity, security, and stability I provide for it. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of nothing. Don't be moved unnecessarily. Don't be disturbed by what you see going out, going, happening out there. Stay with the word of God. Exercise your faith. Speak to your mind. Speak to your spirit. Tell your spirit, don't be agitated. Peace and be still. Refuse to be moved. You know, I told you some time ago, I said, tell somebody all the time or say to yourself, I can never be without help. I can never be without help. Why should I? When I got the Holy Spirit, my helper. So if you have a helper, a supreme helper, a supreme helper, how will something become difficult for you? Nothing is too difficult for me. Nothing is too difficult for you because the world has made provision for you. God has made provision for us. He wants us to enjoy prosperity, peace and stability, health in our body, strongness so that we can take righteousness to the nations of the world. If you are sick as they are, what do you have to show? If you are as poor as they are, how are you going to tell them that my God is good? And his fullness and his faithfulness endured forever. He said, I have made you a savior. I have made you a savior. A savior. Somebody that helps others that are in problem. That's who we are. That's who we are. Saviors. Saviors. We are seated with him in the heavenly places. We are saviors of the world. Saviors. You see, I'm happy because I am surrounded with saviors. How can I be helpless when I have saviors around me? Helpers of destinies. This is who we are. He said, nations. I will prove to nations I will prove to nations that I have given them peace. I have given them prosperity and I have given them security and stability because I provide it. Hallelujah. When people, some people specialize this in preaching the word of God in such a way that they will make them scared. It's unnecessary. The good news is to bring healing. The good news is to bring calmness of hearts. The good news is to tell the poor that he can become prosperous in Christ. The good news is to tell the sick you can be healed in Christ. The good news is that if you were a sinner, righteousness is, is yours now. That is the good news. Verse 10. Thus says the Lord, yet again, there shall be heard 
in this place of which you say it is a desolate waste. Without man and without beasts, even in the city of Judah and in the street of Jerusalem, that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without any beasts. He said, God says, said, yet again, there shall be had in the places of which you say it is desolate. What he's saying is that where you said nothing is going to work, where you say where there is not going to be solutions, where you said that these people are failures, nothing good comes out of them. So when you look again, when you thought that they were weak, so when you look again, you will see that they are strong. They are multiplying. They are increasing. So yet again, I will prosper them. Where there was no man, where there was no beast, where there were no inhabitants, desolate, so there will be abundance. Next verse. We'll stop at 12. 11. He said, Dear, shall be heard again the voice of joy and the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of those who sings as they bring sacrifice of thanksgiving into the house of the Lord. Praise. Give praise and thanks to the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good. For his mercy and his kindness and steadfast love endure it forever. For I will cause the cutties of the land to be reversed and return to be as it was at first, see it, the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. You see, when you read such a scripture, you have to respond to it. You have to rejoice with it. You celebrate it. I can never, I can never be without help and nothing is too difficult for me. I got a hold of my spirit with the word. The word has taken hold of my spirit. He has taken possession of my spirit. And there is nothing other than to prosper and to do well. Stability. Increase. Peace. Safety is as a result of the word. The devil can steal everything from you. An army can invade your home. But if you have the word of God, they can even take your Bible. They can take all that you already have in the physical. But if you have the word of God in your spirit, they can take it. They can. That word will grow. The Bible said the word of God grew mightily and it prevailed. He said the word of God grew and it took over. The word of God inside of you cannot be stolen. When it is outside of you, it is still able. When it's not in you, it is still able. But when the word dwells inside of you, come rain, come shine. Health, my goal. But you can regenerate it. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if be at work in you, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead be inside of you, it shall revitalize your mortal body. 
Meaning it will regenerate, it will recreate and restore what was stolen. If you can regenerate your mortal body, it will regenerate your finances. It will regenerate your household. It will regenerate whatever they stole from you, whatever was taken by force, will be restored. So long as you have it in your spirit. This is why it is necessary that you take hold of the word with your spirit. And you speak to your spirit at all times. Peace. Be you. Still, nothing is too difficult for me. You know, when you speak to yourself and you speak to situations, they begin to respond to you. The forces of nature, the forces of nature, angelic activities, they will rearrange the situation to match what you have confessed and what you have declared. Because your spirit has taken hold of it and nothing can change it. Praise the Lord. He said, There shall be heard again the voice of joy and the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of those who sing as they bring sacrifice of thanksgiving. Not money, not wailing, not crying. But giving time, singing and rejoicing in their heart when the outside is like it's been destroyed. When nothing is working, but the joy of the Lord is your strength on your inside. When the outside is being dilapidated, nothing seems to be coming together. But the word of God that abides forever, that can never be moved, he will recreate it as of the beginning. As God said, light be, earth be, all those things will be as of the beginning. Because the word is inside of you. They can take everything that you have worked for all your life. They are temporary anyway. But you can recreate them by giving yourself wholly to the world. Learn to separate the noise from your spirit. Let the music of the world let the music of health, let the music of peace, let the music of prosperity continually go on in your mind. Your mind is a beautiful garden. Whatever takes root there will manifest on the outside. Verse 12, the last. Thus said Pastor Clement. Who said it? This is what we call prophecy. You prophesy the word to yourself. Thus said the Lord of hosts in this place which is desolate, without man and without beasts, in all his city, there shall again be dwelling and pastors of shepherd resting their flock. Hallelujah. You prophesy. When they said it's difficult, you said, no, nothing is difficult for me. Nothing. Nothing is difficult for me. 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 Because I take possession of all that he has given me. You prophesy to yourself. You prophesy to the situation. In the name of Jesus, nothing is difficult for me. Finances, you are not difficult for me. Oh, my head is intact. Nothing. Absolutely what? Nothing. 
absolutely nothing. Because the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in me. Is at work in me. I said is at work in you. Nothing is too difficult for you. You will not go down with the tide. You will ride above the tide of life. You will succeed and you will bring righteousness to nation. When others are losing it, you will get it together. Stability will be your peace. So they will say, thus said the Lord, in this place, in this place where there is virus, in this place where there is lack, in this place where there is fear, in this place where there is trouble, peace, be still. Peace, be Stay, my spirit, peace, be still. Prosperity is mine. Head is mine. I am riding on the wings of the eagle. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is difficult for me and nothing will be difficult for you. Remember, calmness is power. Be calm. Don't be easily moved. Separate the noise and stay with the world and you will enjoy it. All that Christ has provided. Let us pray. What a mighty God. We say hallelujah. What a mighty God. We say hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow. Before him, what a mighty God we say, Hallelujah! What a mighty God we say, Hallelujah! We say, Hallelujah! Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him, war a mighty God.